The other interesting moment about this entire sequence is there's a deleted scene. Me and Logan decided to cut that joke entirely. Hello there. First of all, thank you for joining. I really appreciate it. And also, I understand that a lot of you know who I am because I work for Logan Paul. And if you've watched Logan Paul, it's most likely you've seen this sketch. You guys really enjoyed that sketch and I really appreciate your comments. Thank you. Now, since starting this channel, I have asked you guys what you want to see. And a lot of you have asked me to break down some of the videos I have made for Logan. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing. Before we do that, if you're new here or a returning viewer, make sure that you're subscribed. Previously, I revealed how to make a David Dobrik vlog, how Casey Neistat tells stories, or how Mr. Beast optimizes his content. There is so much for you to experience here. So join everyone else who's already decided to be part of this journey and subscribe. Now, full disclosure, with these breakdowns, it's easy to assume that the creators knew that they were making these decisions at that time. But when they are creating, they do not think as in-depth or as detailed. It's instinctual. They don't know what they're doing, but instinctively, they know what works. This applies to me as well. When creating the sequence, I didn't know why I was making these decisions, but instinctively, I knew what works because of my experiences and because of what I've studied. Even for me, this is an interesting reflection on why why I have made these decisions. I feel like I've wasted enough time now. I wanna show you my creative choices and how I've made this sketch. Now to make things a little bit easier, I have color coded elements of the timeline. Blue represents in-camera audio or the dialogue, light blue sound effects and green music. So finally getting started, let's look at the first part of the sequence. Hi baby, I gotta tell you something. What is it? Okay, so this is gonna sound so stupid. But the other day I was fixing that hole in the well. When all of a sudden, I felt the presence. What are the two most famous horror themes ever? Psycho and Jaws. What do they have in common? Rhythm. The best example of rhythm in this sketch is that sounds. I played them at specific points that gave rhythm. It literally plays like a metronome throughout the sketch. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I also wanted to make the entrance of that shot quite dramatic and so I added in a type sound effect. That sound effect is adding to the dread and attention. It's enhancing the feel. For this moment I just used some water movement and of course just some lizard noises. But because I continued the sounds over Logan's shot as well, he now seems a lot more vulnerable and we're also seeing it from his perspective. I don't particularly want to focus too much on visual effects. I want to spend more time on how you can use editing to tell your story. But it doesn't mean I'm going to ignore when I use visual effects to tell the story. First, I had a friend cut out the ghost and put her in front of a digital green screen. What I did behind her is frame by frame had the background distorted. But then of course, I then layer on the ghost on top who would then not be a affected by the distorted background, therefore enhancing the idea that she's a supernatural being. First, I wanted to create another visual effect to make her seem more supernatural. So I used the motion tracking software so she stays in the exact same spot in the frame while the rest of the background becomes distorted. The most famous example of this effect is the Beats by Dre ad. I use that same technique onto the ghost. Of course, now I then start using the music to escalate. As you can see, I actually used three different points of the track to what I wanted it to be. I'm a victim of this as well, but it's really easy to allow the pacing of the track to dictate your own cutting. It's a really important discipline to get where you adjust the track to what you want it to be, not what the track is. I wanted this sequence to be slightly fast, but the track was kind of slow. So I cut out two bars of the track so it plays out faster. I recommend you look at musical tracks, not as a singular piece of entity, but as multiple different sound effects. This musical track is an entire sound library itself. <laughs> When they were filming it, they didn't actually intend to have the light be part of the reveal. They initially wanted the shot to start after she's already been lit. I didn't know that. And I instead interpreted that light to therefore be a scary reveal. But then of course, on top of that, I added in a, just a really hit on that light reveal. This is the most important thing I want to touch on. 
I don't know how to make that sound effect. I wanna give you one of my favorite quotes of all time. Always hire a lazy person because they'll find the quickest way to do it. I wanted a very scary scream type sound effect. And I knew in my library, even with the monster sound effects, nothing would work. And I genuinely did not know what to do. And I got lazy. And so I used a sound effect from a video game that I really enjoy called Destiny 2 and borrowed their sound effect. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, good. That's the highlight of that sequence. What's next? She grabbed me. She grabbed you? Yes. What do you mean she grabbed you? There's something really effective in the comedy. The editing interrupts Josie's statement. What do you mean she grabbed you? Uh, ah, shit. I'm struggling to describe the comedy here. There's something very funny about the fact that the editing interrupts Josie. Ah, but I can't find the words as to why. And this is what I mean to what I said earlier. My experiences have taught me how to make it effective, but I genuinely cannot find the words as to why, but it feels funny. If someone has a much better understanding of comedy as to why that's funnier, please let me know in the comments. Moving on, here's this short sequence. Let's just give this a quick look. <laughs> So I actually created a compound clip. It's just a collection of all of the sounds I use. I went a little bit overboard. Let's break that down. First of all, they're in a wet environment, so a bit of slime work. Kind of continued that sound with some alien egg hatches. I also wanted to make a sound more like a monster. And a purring type sound effects. So this is kind of oddly sexual. I also wanted to enhance the slaps, and so I put in some punch sound effects. And of course, clearly I spent too long in this bit, got bored, wanted to move on and just throw in that video game sound effect again. All of those sounds together, create. Now the joke of this sketch is subverting the expectation of what a ghost will do to you. The joke is the ghost wants to get it on with Logan rather than kill him. So it's a comedic satirical commentary on horror tropes. Now I wanted to emphasize that joke and the best way to do that is with the power of three. The number three is so optimized because it gives you the least amount of information you need to present a pattern. In this case, the pattern is the first cutaway presenting the story. The second cutaway establishes the pattern and the rhythm of the story and the fact that those two cutaways are presented in common horror movie tropes also sets this joke up. The pattern has been established and by establishing that pattern we can now break it with the joke that this is not a horror movie but a comedy with the ghost suddenly making out with Logan rather than trying to kill him. In fact we use the power of three twice. Using the power of three as comedy is so effective it was the next Joke. One, we have the reveal of the new ghost. Two, we have them going underneath the water. And then three. Really intense stuff. That joke would not have worked as well if the pattern was not established. Now on top of that, there are two other really interesting things about this entire sequence. One, they filmed the horror sequence quite a while ago, but when Logan gave me the footage and told me to edit it, he had not even filmed any of the bedroom footage. But of course, I still needed to structure this project. So what did I do? I went fuck it and filmed it myself. All right, babe, I gotta tell you something. What is it? Okay, this is gonna sound so stupid. But the other day, I was fixing that hole in the wall. When all of a sudden, I felt a presence. Because I filmed that, I now had these placeholders to help me better imagine what the final product is going to be. The other interesting moment about this entire sequence is there's a deleted scene. After the two ghosts go down on Logan, it cuts to this line. So then what happened? Nothing really. It was originally meant to set up this scene. Oh. Baby, I am so sorry. Yeah, that's a kind of funny scene. But after we gave it some thought, me and Logan decided to cut that joke entirely. We didn't feel like this joke added enough value to justify its presence. It slowed down the entire sketch. And not to mention again, bringing back the power of free. What were the two big reveal jokes? The first big joke reveal was the ghost making out with Logan. The second big comedic reveal was the two ghosts going down on Logan. And because we've had a consistent pattern of language of the power of free, you will be anticipating what the third joke is. I... And so that was the punchline. That was the punchline. It sucks. So we cut it. Out. It's gone. And so by removing it, the final reveal, which was this. Because I actually have something to tell you too. What do you mean?
that became the punchline. Whereas prior, that was the fourth joke and it wouldn't have landed as well. And this reveal then being the third one makes this punchline far more effective than the not as strong punchline that Logan and the ghost were dating. Made the entire sketch far more focused and condensed, significantly comedically effective. Okay, so that pretty much summarizes my breakdown of this sketch. This is a new channel and I'm experimenting of what type of content I want to create. This was really quite fun for me, but of course I'm making this for you. If you enjoyed this, let me know. If there is another piece of content I've made that you want me to break down, tell me what it is. I feel like I don't really want to hang around much more in this video, so thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Running through the city till I drop.